And with no further ado, look who just popped in at 6.58, two minutes early. Oh, yeah, yeah. If you're not early, you're late. If you're not early, you're late. We have uh, 17 friends watching tonight. Our great thank you to our friend Hilda Beast, uh, who uh, is a regular on Echoplex Media. In fact, she she helps Dave co-host sometimes. She's a fabulous person. And Dave's one of my favorite people. I don't want to admit to you how often I watch Echoplex Media because that would be embarrassing. But I'm going to say hi to uh, my good friend, Dave. He's down in the Bay Area. He has uh, founded, along with some other wonderful people, Echoplex Media. They have a number of excellent podcasts during the week. Um, I think they're a premier example of an independent broadcaster. Their broadcasts go from the intellectual Dollar Tree uh, with co-host H.K. Perrin um, that covers many different topics, uh, a lot of them. Uh, the dark web and and wacky people saying wacky things. Uh, that's that's always a good time. We have the councilman and Dave that do down ballot, which I enjoy a lot, even though I don't happen to live in the Bay Area. That happens to focus on uh, Bay Area politics, and and uh, the councilman is an insider, so to speak, and uh, has some pretty good stuff. And then uh, on the weekend. You generally have a catter day, which is a good time. Then Dave spins some tunes. I want to show people just for the record. Uh, I'm wearing Dave's Echoplex Sessions t-shirt here, which is which I like a lot, which I like a lot. I got that. And uh, Dave spins some tunes, which is a good time. So it's it's not always serious. There's a lot of laughs. And then finally, uh, before I throw it to Dave, we'll talk about the big show on Sundays. He records that live. It's called the Plex. It's every Sunday at seven. And then he goes into the late night with the red light and we have a good time. So um, thanks again for being here, Dave, from Echoplex Media. I'm going to go ahead and throw um, Echoplex Media's uh, Twitch in the chat here. And I hope everybody, if you don't already, which you probably do, uh, I hope you go over and follow them immediately on Twitch because it's one of the best things going there. Hi, Dave. Hey, what's up? What's up? That was quite an intro. Yeah, man. Well, I'm a big fan. You uh, you just forgot uh, Thursdays we do Cults in the Satanic Panic. Oh, thank you. Fill us in on that. Thursdays. <laughs> Thursdays. What happens on Thursdays? Oh, we just do an hour on Scientology or some other cult, but usually Scientology. And then we find some old Satanic Panic video for the second hour. We've been re-watching the uh, Pagan Invasion lately where they uh, love Jesus and really hate people from India. <laughs> and then, uh, and then, then, of course, we watch Fire by Night, because how could we not watch coked up Blaine try to do a Christian version of Saturday Night Live? Yeah, Fire by Night is like, a, it's a vintage late 80s, early 90s Christian television show that I believe they distributed mostly by video cassette. Yeah, yeah. Der, der, what would we say? Live to tape? <laughs> <laughs> but literally, literally tape at that point. Right. And it's got some of the worst Christian music you'll ever hear. Uh, sometimes it's just it's just uh, it's just truly painful. Um, we tend to get we tend to get a lot of laughs and watch some watch some nutty stuff. And and the, but one thing I, I guess that's really drawn me um, is, Dave, you've built a community. Yes. Um, and I don't know in the real world virtually any of the people in that community i don't know what their gender identification is i don't know what their color is i don't know what their what their age is for the most part we've learned a little bit more about each other in those things but for the most part people interact in that chat in one of the most positive interesting ways that i've been to and i think that's what draws it to you because i like the people like everybody is is honest and if if somebody comes in and wants to fight people are like oh yeah what do you want to fight about <laughs> <laughs> okay all yeah, right we to. have we have a we have an emote the hello i am debate emote that actually comes from somebody who came in the channel and there's the first thing they said is hello i am debate and we just like, well, we're going to go ahead and use that. We can't, we can't claim to have invented that. But um, I think like one of the things that we were missing, because you've been with us since we, before we were on Twitch and before, I mean, there was a little community around us back then, but the, <clears throat> the, the communication back then was a lot more one way from yeah, the studio we out. To, we used to do the chat on discord and then you were basically distributing through Icecast. Yeah. We still have Icecast. Um, yeah, we're still we still simulcast via Icecast. But um, 
we didn't there was the communication was largely one way once the show got going we weren't paying that much attention to the chat and there weren't like mods and they're just because it wasn't <clears throat> you know the discoverability was really low we we weren't doing video yet because people were some people were camera shy plus like i just didn't have the uh requisite equipment or the like the know-how uh but that was what was missing you were there it was fine like we were <clears throat> you know it was fine but uh you know i go back and listen and i'm like oh man i was i was not really the greatest broadcaster back then and that's fine like we all we all get better at the things that we're doing and um it was like it was just it was a little bit too chaotic and and the communication was in a lot of ways just a single direction us out to the audience and that's fine for a podcast but for a live show especially a live you know a smaller live show you you can't do it without talking to the people that are that are watching the show or listening to the show or whatever. It's it gets boring and it's a grind and you can't make any money. Yeah, and and so as it's come, uh, as a, as your Twitch presence has grown, uh, there's a number of broadcasters, just like our our dear friend Hildebeest, uh, rated us. So we we kind of. Uh, share share information with each other and and people that kind of have different niches in the broadcasting sphere uh so for example you know hildebeest does a lot of canadian politics and she does some gaming and she's an amazing baker and so you know i'm not always like into what she's doing but i always enjoy watching her and the community is really cool and i find that with with um with Echoplex too, and I'm going to talk about two things that that you've done. I think are very are very interesting. Um, number one, you have a, a show that's not really one of your premier shows, but but it's still very significant called Local Love, and you're a big supporter of the local music scene and have have shown me a lot of great artists over the years. And number two, um, Echoplex Media, because one of your founders also has that passion, has been doing an incredible job of covering what's going on in Shasta. So can you talk to us? about both of those things about local love and and what role echoplex media has been playing in shasta and why that's an important story to you so <clears throat> we're kind of actually um winding down local love in a lot of ways um we've we've done our time um we're not done but we're it's not we no longer do the interviews live we no longer have it on the schedule um we're no longer like actively reaching out to artists and stuff because if, if you know we've been doing it since 2016 and you, you know, when you're doing what, when you're doing what I'm doing, you got to pick and choose your battles and, um, getting that one going the way I, the way I really wanted it to go is like a battle that I had to get, get rid of. But real quick, I do have Nahal from Sweet Haya coming on for the, the new format is <clears throat> instead of like having the, like, we may still do this occasionally, but the old format was the whole band would come in. Everybody would have a mic. We'd sit around and get fucked up. Um, <clears throat> And that was fine, whatever it was fun. Um, but we've the the new format is somebody if they want to play some music or whatever, we set that up, we record that, but that's really not what's going on. The I want one person or maybe two people from the band to come in and talk about themselves as well as their music. What are they do, you know, <clears throat> their musical journey, or <clears throat> if you remember uh the Elise from White Fuzzy Bloodbath felt safe coming here. That, but- because White Fuzzy Bloodbath just released a new video a couple of days ago that I shot over to you that's really good. They're heavy. And so, yeah, you had uh, a couple episodes ago. I'm going to, I put up, uh, nobody knows. Well, people know. Uh, Echoplex Media is also on uh, on YouTube. And so you can go on YouTube and you can watch uh, the the a lot of the podcasts, uh, including Dave's interview with at least from white fuzzy bug bloodbath, which is really interesting. It's not just about music. I mean, no, you. that's like, she felt because, and it, it, it came out in the, the post game of the interview. It's because we wear our, be, it's because we wear our progressive politics on our sleeve that she was like, this is the outlet where I have to go to tell my story because I'm going to be in a place where people are going to treat me with respect. And so, <clears throat> And I'm I'm glad that that was the choice. And the next interview I'm doing, the last one I did was with uh, Ryan Acosta of Sons of Theo. But again, it was more we talked more about 
he's a music teacher and he's trying to get uh, get that going as his main business. So we talked more about that and his journey through teaching music, right? Because that's I've had I've, I can you can find interviews uh, with these people in the past where they're talking about their band or they have their whole band on, and that's fine. But the next one is going to be ne- Nehal Abuleta from. Uh, uh, Sweet Haya, and she's going to talk about uh, her journey through music in the San Jose scene as an immigrant and as basically a queen bee in what is a, what is what is what is a boys club, and that's going to be the theme of that interview. It's going to be set of some of the same themes I'm assuming from the Elise interview. That uh, hopefully nothing is intense because I don't want to find out that uh, you know what I mean. Right. I don't want to. I don't want to. But if you know if 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 something did ha- if something did go down, then you know this is a, a safe place to talk about it. The the Shasta one kind of came out of nowhere, honestly. Um, the media wench, uh, Ashley, my co-host and my co-conspirator, as Madison Starmoon would call her, um, her kids and her baby's dad live up there, plus a bunch of her friends are up there, and she has family up there. And we first started covering them when this guy named Carlos Zapata essentially went to the Board of Supervisors and made a terrorist threat. I, there's no other way to describe what he did. He went up there and said that he was that people were going to get hurt over like COVID restrictions, and it's just gotten. I guess maybe the temperatures down a little bit. Like no individual incidents, except for this recent one where that guy went up there and just looked dead in the eyes of the only black guy in the room and said the N word, which was pretty pretty terrifying. But you know, we we've we've noticed it's everything from like anti mask stuff, anti vaccine stuff going on up there. Um, you know, back in 2014, there was a famous incident where they had a whole meeting about chemtrails and that's sort of lore, like for chemtrail people, they'll still show that as like evidence. I'm like, but that's a board of supervisors meeting in the, in the most unhinged County in California. What do you like? What are you talking about? So and when you, when you talk about, and, uh, I want to tell people that I'm putting up the link for uh, episode 326, and that'll also uh, hook you up to Local Love and to the Echoplex Media YouTube channel, uh, which you should follow, uh, at least from White Fuzzy Blood Baths. So that's that's up there. Go ahead and do that. You can you can follow them on, on that. You'll dig it. Check out White Fuzzy Blood Bath, um, uh YouTube channel because they just put out some new videos this week too. It's pretty awesome. At least it's, it's heavy stuff. So what... Um, so playing those roles that that you've played in stories, you've also played roles in investigations as well of so so two things. Number one, what's the dystopia be? So so if people That's look at funny. your channel and they see that you call it the dystopia, what is that? And number two, uh when what you cover under that banner, um what do you hope that you teach people? So the dystopia beat is, uh, <clears throat> I didn't coin it actually, uh, Ben Collins from NBC. It's the first place I saw it was in his, um, bio on Twitter. He's like senior reporter dystopia beat. And I was like, that sounds about, and, and I was like, well, I use a lot of his work. Like I read his articles a lot and I like, you know, I refer back to him like, you know, on background, I'm not just like you were saying earlier, I'm not just like reading a Ben, Ben Collins article, but I, certainly have learned a lot from him and uh so the dystopia beat is i guess people who cover like conspiracies conspiracism uh extremism and it became pretty that beat became pretty valuable um during the pandemic like when the pandemic hit because before like the dystopia beat was like and there's nothing wrong with this i love both of these guys it was zach patrizio and will summer going to those Jacob wall press conferences where the guy was dressed like a banana and shit. And that was fine too. That was funny. And they, they were doing good work because those people were grifters. But during the pandemic, the people who I would say were kind of on that beat before I'll include like the Q and anonymous guys. And I don't really, I, maybe I shouldn't list cause I don't want to leave people out. Right. Like I don't want to leave out people who are doing good work, but what ended up happening is that, People like us who were told, oh, why aren't you covering real news? Why aren't you covering things that matter? Why are you all into this conspiracy stuff? Why is this what you're talking about? Well, sorry. I mean, the the whole thing went, you know, the whole thing went mainstream. It became very, very common in not just alternative media outlets, but some legacy outlets were platforming people who were, you know, saying 
wild things about uh, health and uh, well, the word wellness is pretty a pretty messed up word at this point because usually usually that's associated with like influencers or whatever. But like they were saying these wild things, and all of a sudden this this group of people, some of whom you know worked for you know legacy media like Ben Collins, and some work somewhere in between like at the Daily Beast, and then people who are totally independent like me and uh, Julian and Travis uh, from QAnon Anonymous, we were all of a sudden the people who knew, the people who understood. Um, you know, had the pandemic never happened, I would have, I would have never been, you know, name checked in articles on five thirty eight, right? And not for nothing, they, they kicked me off of Facebook for what I said about them on five thirty eight, and then the lady at five thirty eight like reached out to her contact at Facebook and was like, "What the fuck?" Right. So, so I mean, you're kind of reiterating what Will and I were talking about in terms of independent media. Uh, there are some stories you happen to be on one right now that uh for for many different reasons most of them bad maybe all of them bad people don't all of want them covered bad. people don't want these stories covered people don't want the stories that i've covered covered either people do not want my reporting about uh police murder and the impact on families and they don't want my reporting on the gig economy and corporate fraud uh on a global scale they don't want it they're going to get it but they don't want it so uh, I think you're doing a little bit that right now because you one of the passions I think that you've shown us is is an understanding of cults. One of those in particular that you followed very um, deeply is Scientology. Uh, yeah. And I mean, the reason for that, it's pretty, pretty well publicized. You know, I've said anytime anybody asks me about it in 2004 or five. Uh, my best friend, uh, her mom died and her mom was a Scientologist. And then all of a sudden they roped her in and she went off and joined the mothership in Clearwater. And uh, I know where she is now. Um, strangely enough, she's in Shasta County. <laughs> because it all comes back to fucking Shasta County. But I mean, she, you know, she's the people that knew her haven't really heard from her or spoken to her. And she doesn't seem to have much interest in talking to us. Um, and that's fine. It's whatever. But what what I became even more interested. Well, I'm very interested in the cult of Scientology. But one of the things I've started to get really interested in is the community not of like journalists that cover Scientology, but the community of ex Scientologists who have all found each other and I'm and watching them behave in ways that in some, in some cases remind me of the behavior of the cult of Scientology, where there's in groups and out groups and people who are, you, who you, thou shalt not be criticized. And there were that, that kind of stuff that's going on is really interesting to me because like I'm an outsider. I haven't really been covering Scientology in a, even a journalistic capacity for very long at all. Um, I was mostly just interested in it because they stole my friend, right? And I was like, fuck those motherfuckers. And so, you know, as it switched over to being more like that, as it switched over to being a thing where I am teaching people about Scientology now and, um, and some, to some extent explaining the dynamics of high control, high demand groups to people, um, especially as it m maybe relates to conspiracy theory communities, because there's a little bit of crossover going on there. It, um, it, it, it just occurs to me that there's a lot more to it than just the, the, you know, the wacky story about the, the DC eights and the, the volcanoes that there's a lot of, um, a lot of unresolved pain, unresolved trauma. And then the way people get out, unfortunately, in a lot of cases, who's there, who's there with open arms, another group of people that's probably going to cause them pain and trauma if they, if they don't tow the fucking line. And, um, that's sad actually. And so the, the thing I'm trying to track down right now is in that space. But I think the, with the story that I'm looking at, I think it's going to just slip through the slip through my fingers because uh, not, not, nobody's willing to go on the record because they don't want to criticize a popular person in the in the thing and that's that's unfortunate so yeah that is so where do you see you're moving to a new studio i know um the community has been pretty generous to you in helping you get uh all of the accoutrement for the new studio hopefully you can have at least bisexual lighting if not gay lighting um <laughs> What's what's the new studio going to be like and what's that going to allow you to do? So one of the things that I that I thought I wanted was a lot of space. 
But now, once I got into a lot of space, uh, this is this place I'm in right now is a garage, and one of the problems with the garage is lighting. Um, the walls are not white; they're wooden, and so they don't reflect they don't reflect light properly. So uh, the community was generous enough to buy me just an absolute shit ton of uh, lights, like you might see at a, at a club or a concert, which are really powerful, and they're exactly what I need to light this place up. Right, and we we have we have an inside joke about about that many of the broadcasters we've been watching who are of course rapidly bigoted in many different ways, and then they have purple lighting, and so <laughs> Dave had a joke about bisexual. I don't remember where the generation of bisexual lighting came from, but but we it's a Twitter thing. It. Maybe yeah, Tumblr yeah. kids came up with it. Yeah. So, so so anyway, hopefully we'll get that. So what I'm what I'm what I'm going to be able to do is like use a lot of what I learned about lighting. Um, this space in the in the new space, I'll be able to, you know, I'll be probably be able to get rid of this uh, this backdrop behind me and just have like lighting uh, behind me. Um, I'm looking into ways to include the logo in the lighting behind me, um, but that's making it look sharp and good and stuff. It's, it's going to be a challenge. It's not certainly not the top of my list, but um, it's going to be yeah, it's going to be not big. <laughs> it's going to be like a like a, a like a medium sized bedroom, which is kind of where I was before. Uh, but will you be, will you be able to have in studio guests? One, yes, uh, maybe uh, two or two, two. You'll be able to have up to two. two. There'll be there'll be two stations, just like there are now. There's a there's a station next to me in the new space. The station will be across the room from me, but there'll be two stations, each with a one of these Makosi cameras, and then uh, there'll be the camera, other cameras for like when I'm DJing or whatever will be like mounted to the walls. And they'll be pointed in certain directions. The, uh, you know, the disco ball is coming with, um, but I'm going to be able to light that up better so that it actually shines on me while I'm playing. Um, yeah. So, right, talk about the Echoplex sessions. So one of the fun things um, on Saturdays, often it's before the Catterday show. So Dave will log on a bit early and, and play some tunes and people have it's kind of a community time. People, people, you know, just hang out and enjoy. Uh, and then uh, sometimes uh, it happens often, you know, at least once a week, generally. Uh, then after a show will end, Dave will, Dave will take a quick break and switch to the DJing. Dave, you've been DJing, what, since you were a kid, right? Yeah, I wanted drums when I was a teenager. And my mom was like, you know what uh, has a volume knob is uh, turntables and a mixer. And I, you go to rave, so maybe we could get that for you instead. <laughs> <laughs> because drums don't have a volume knob and uh that was that i started yeah I was like 16 or something i've been djing um you know i played i threw raves for a long time because i didn't want to get a real job and that was a lot of fun but totally illegal so that that wasn't a you know i never got a, i never got busted or anything but uh you know it was a uh, it was fun but you know it's young man's work not 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 something i should be still doing I don't know. But it's, it's we what 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 I what I uh, one of the main things I like about it is it gives people in the chat like an opportunity maybe to have uh, discussions that are off topic because we really do try to eat like the regulars. If you notice in the chat that the, the chat is talking about what the show is about at the right. most of the time, new people come in and they don't they the they ha they end up having a like they end up having a problem when they come in if they want to like be disruptive because the people in the chat don't care. They're like, no, no, we're talking about this Charlie Kirk video or whatever. Bugger right. off. And, it, and, like, and it's for somebody like me who just, you know, just likes to laugh, like satire and likes to read funny stuff from other people. The chat's a joy. Like we just make each other laugh, quite frankly. So, yeah, I think it's, I think it's good that it gives people an opportunity to um, like to, off to have off topic conversations or just to kind of groove out. And for me too, like if I, if like, for example, like if like late at night, if I decide to DJ, it's because my mind is cooked. Right. But my, my body, I know I'm like, I know I'm going to be up for a while right. so I can, I can, you know, I, you know, we'll, we'll lose, you know, two thirds of the viewers or whatever. And that's fine. But we, you know, this will be some like community time and I'm, I might DJ anyway, so I may as well broadcast it. And it just kind of like, it allows me, I guess, to just keep drinking. <laughs> and, right, but you make a lot of your own mixes, and like you're doing a lot of stuff. You've got you make videos. I mean, you you do quite a production out of it. It's not just you're not just like playing tunes off of off of uh, the internet. Oh no, no, I'm 
I'm, so, I'm, so quite, what, I'm what, quite good. What would it, what, what would people expect if they wanted to tune in? Like what, what's different about Echoplex sessions than, than just music? Why would uh, somebody want to check it out? I mean, it's being chopped up and live remixed in a lot of cases. Um, if I'm a little less, little less enthusiastic, it's still being mixed properly, um, being mixed in key. Um, sometimes being sa- sometimes the samples are being done live. Um, you know, just a little bit more than just blending the the songs, but not. But unfortunately, I'm not super good at um, like turntablism. So you're if you. You'll very rarely hear me uh, scratching. Very rarely. Um, it's usually if I'm uh, quite intoxicated, you'll hear me scratching. And I'm not bad at it, but I'm not like super good at it. So it's not. It's not something you're going to get a lot of on my channel. Plus, I, it feels weird scratching. Like I've always felt weird scratching on like uh, digital equipment versus vinyl. Vinyl feels a certain way, and it just doesn't. I know a lot of people they do great stuff with it. I'm not like there's no problem if people are scratching on digital equipment. It's just. It's just to, and the fact that I was never like super into it in the first place, the reason that I did like it is because of the physicality of it. And, um, I don't, you know, you don't get the physicality of it on a, on a controller just isn't there. The, the there's just something, the rec, the, the record's heavy that the motor on the turntable has a lot of torque. It just feels a certain way. And it, that, that feeling is gone on, on digital equipment, no matter how much they try to emulate it, they're never going to be able to. When you look at the uh, the demographics of your audience on Twitter, you've been how long? I'm sorry, on Twitch. My apologies. How long have you been on Twitch now? I mean, I think the account, the account creation date is <clears throat> probably seventeen or eighteen, but that's that's not like I think that we didn't really hit Twitch in any kind of meaningful way until the 2020. I think. Okay, so the, so we'll say around three years. In, in that three years, uh, we have a little joke. So you guys call yourself what? What is it? The uh, some, the what side of of left Twitch? What do you what do you? Oh, the fun but scary side. I think it says in the the, in the fun the, but uh, scary side of left Twitch. And so yeah, that gives you it away. It's generally a more uh, left leaning but but generally nonpartisan group. I don't think we have many real. Uh, partisan uh fans in there not many not many diehard democrats no no that 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 i've seen when we do make a joke about calling it the twitter old folks home because i think i'm i may be your oldest listener and i'm not even that old i i'm 55 Uh, absolutely not which which is not that old we've got retired people they're retired people who are regulars yeah, there you go. So, so we and we've got some, we've got some youngsters in there that are in there. The youngster, in there. we mean like almost thirty, <laughs> late tw- late twenties. That's right. That's right. That's I'm I'm dating myself big time. Um, what do you see as the demographics of Twitch? You're also on YouTube. You do some other broadcasting. I know you have an exclusive uh, broadcasting live with Twitch because that gives you some benefits. Um, as a as an independent broadcaster, how would you make that decision, and where do you see that going? Um, I mean, the the it was the thing is, it's not like we're not partnered, but we're we, and I don't even know if the program's still running. But we agreed to exclusivity. First of all, you're not supposed to uh, if you're an affiliate, you're not supposed to multi-stream anyway. They don't, you know, if you're making money, they don't enforce it though. But um, uh, I don't even know if it's we were we were more likely to be on the homepage for a while because they were trying to push uh, talk shows uh, for a bit because that it was because uh, you know the the idea is that everybody thinks it's a gaming site and it 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 largely is the biggest channels are always games always games or maybe now some some sporting events because they're kind of reaching out into doing like more sporting events that's right but, that's right they were broadcasting i think uh college wrestling was something that they were i think pushing out there or something i don't remember what it was but yeah interesting broadcasting so they're um that we thought we were going to come to Twitch and be like kind of counter programming um, uh, versus like the manosphere for like younger men. We thought that was like where we were going to end up fitting in. And that's what didn't happen. So, you know, we, we, you know, it Twitch seems to skew male and young, probably white, I would guess, but that's, I don't, I don't know for sure, but, um, our audience skews a little bit older and there's a lot of women that hang out in, in our chat and it seems to be 
a lot of queer people hang out in the chat and um i don't know the as far as um whether or not a lot of people of color hang out I, that i don't know because we don't ask like right. why would we like what like but you know. the but the diversity is both apparent and uh enjoyable uh it would be would be my my statement there so i want to i want to get it wrapped up because this is this is your night off and i really appreciate yeah. the opportunity to kind of uh give people to learn a little bit about you because this is not the stuff you talk about on your broadcast you don't i, really I spend talk very little I, I, a whole to, lot to the extent that i talk about myself i talk about audio a lot and that's about it <laughs> right you're an audio geek but you don't really you know you don't really talk, talk a whole lot about that um but but i want to um you're doing something fun and it sounds I don't know. It probably doesn't sound as cool as it is, but you've got a really cool merch store and it, it's not just, um, I don't know. Like it's just not, it's not just stuff to make you money. Like a lot of it would be supporting community, supporting charities, supporting some bands. And of course, supporting, uh, the channel is too. And, and it's also really cool looking stuff. Like when I wear it around Portland, people are stopping me asking me how to get it. That so, Ruffy yeah. shirt is really good. So the yeah. the thing with the the thing with the ruffies is they 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 do have merch available at their events, right? I'm going to I'm going to get the link to your uh, merch store while you're talking. Yeah, it's just eplex.store actually. Um so uh the thing with the ruffies is they have a they have merch at their events, but they like realized they're like we keep running, you know, we'll get a run of t-shirts printed and we try to guess what people are going to want, but we keep running out of extra large and large t-shirts. And so like now at the at their events if they run out of extra large and somebody's like i need an extra large t-shirt they're like hey man you know i'm sorry i'm out of them but here's a link you know you can buy this t-shirt and it'll be at your house in a week and it'll come to you you know direct printed from our online store and that that's worked out pretty well uh for them because then they don't first of all they don't not get the sale because you know we we have a split with them for the online store but secondly people go to that shop and there's stuff that's exclusive in that shop that they don't have prints of, you know, their old albums. We have all of their, like all of their album logos on shirts there. And so people sometimes will be like, Oh, well, I, I, this is, I've never seen this shirt. And you know, if, if Patty Kay's got time, he's like, Oh, that's exclusive online. We don't print those anymore. And so that's, that's been real good. Um, and they were just too kind of too lazy to do it themselves, which is fine. You know, they they work and they're in a punk band. What do you think they're? I'm kind of like that too. Like, I mean, I the, the amount of infrastructure I want to deal with really is not that high. I want to write and yap my mouth. That's I don't really want to work that hard. Yeah, yeah. And so, like, you know, we went through and got all their you know designs, uh, all their old designs. We had to we actually put them through stable diffusion uh, to upscale them so that they were uh, uh, appropriate for print. Nice. Um, and uh shout out to hk for helping a little on that although i've i've now i now use stable diffusion um and it's but <clears throat> you know we were never able to really get the merch thing to work for us i i'm like and, and on this one it's just all all shout outs to fourth wall honestly like right, they, that's, a, that's a the vendor that you use a partner fourth wall and they're pretty they're pretty cool they're kind of a newer company but they're really high service high touch i i met with them and was really impressed yeah, yeah, like we got an email and I was like, I don't want to take a call about a merch shop. And then the media wench was like, you should take the call about the merch shop. When was the last time you sold a t-shirt? And I was like, right. <laughs> and I took a call and I was impressed. I was impressed with what they were doing. Um, and uh, and so I like signed up. I was, if I'm not mistaken, I think I was one of the first 20 people on there actually. And um, word on the street is one of their, one of their, uh, one of the higher ups there is a fan of the channel and that's why uh we we ended up getting contacted early on uh, they won't tell me who it is but <laughs> nice <laughs> secrets are fine secrets are fine but yeah that what i wanted <clears throat> what i when i decided first of all once 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 i saw the first time that somebody was able to gift an item out in the chat and the way that worked i was like oh this is the business this is the business because not yeah, only people are, people are generous in the chat. They gift each other stuff, gift memberships, give some t-shirts. People win some free stuff in there. It's fun. It, well, not it, it, it makes the channel like kind of sticky too for people. People are going to be more likely to come back. Even if like, if they're like, Oh, I don't have a lot of money to spend, but if I hang out on that channel, I might get one of those cool fucking shirts anyway. It's right. like, you know, it's, it's it's cool and then it allows people who do have you know people who have more means or whatever in the community 
to be generous, not just with us, but now because they're giving merch out, they're being generous with other members of the community. And I, I assume they do it because it feels good. Right. And because they want to, they want to support the community. And so that's just the first time I saw that, I was like, this is, this is the business. And then I was like, okay, now I need to really get on this merch. I need to make the merch, make sure the merch is good. Right. Cause there's some st- stuff in there. I still think is kind of hokey from our old shop. Like the Madison star moon blocked me on Facebook. Uh, t-shirt i think the design is crap but i think the thing about it is it kind of harkens back to another time right and it, yes it's it's nostalgic and um and yeah it harkens back to another time so we leave it there and you know but the better ones the better designs are like the live laugh lucifer design um i think the the shirt you're wearing with the um with oh, the, here with i'm the, gonna hold up i'll hold up my mouse pad because yeah I that's easier the, i also got the matching mouse pad yeah yeah with the disco ball that's a that's a picture that I took, but then uh, it was put through. It was put through stable diffusion so that it was to. I told it to make it look a little more cartoony, but keep it realistic because I otherwise the photo just wasn't going to print well. It was too many colors, and so that this, this is this is my this, these are shameless plugs. But Dave's my friend, so I can make him money <laughs> if I want to. You know, I like selling other people. I hate selling myself. I'll sell Dave all day long with shamelessly. Shameless, but you should you should see me sell it, Dave. I can't sell myself for crap, but that's okay. Uh, that so, Ruffy shirt is this, the, this is the bomb. This is that the is coolest. this is so cool. Somebody probably yeah, already tried to steal it. It's, yeah, it's they how, did. Yeah, we it's, we. It's how cool it is. But this shirt's the bomb. I can't wear it in Portland without people asking me where to get some. And Dave even made me a uh, a ten percent off code. <laughs> so send me a, send me a text, and I'll give you Dave's ten percent off code for a Ruffy shirt. Oh, well, anybody actually listening to this now space, all caps at, ch- at checkout will get you uh 10% off of anything except for the pride merch. Cause that, that pride merch is, a uh, is, a uh, 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 charity. So we don't, we don't and offer I, a I discount. Gave, I gave three of those pride shirts away for charity, um, which was a lot of fun. Uh, Hilda beast comments that she loves her bingo shirt. One of the things tell, tell people what bingo is. So there's a, there's kind of a, um, audience participation element to the show that's a lot of fun that maybe people that aren't even so much into the content will have fun with sometimes so tell people uh, what that is yeah we you know there's always this joke oh i didn't have that on my bingo card i didn't have that on my bingo card i didn't have on that on my bingo card and then i was like well what if what if you did have it on your bingo card (laughs) and so we made bingo cards we started with conspiracy bingo um, and then we actually had the the show that the conspiracy show I was doing Friday afternoons for a while, and I had called it deconstructing derp, and I was like that name's kind of shitty. Um, the word derp has got some you know, kind of ableist kind of shit around yeah, it, it that it I should. It sounds pejorative. Those are not that great. Yeah, yeah. So I just so I rebranded it to conspiracy bingo and put out a bingo card and. You know, at first there, at first, because Conspiracy Bingo has been going on a while, at first there weren't necessarily enough people in chat for it to be fun. But as soon as we kind of got to where the viewer, the average viewer count hit about 25 or 30, like for that show, it got fun because people were playing bingo and posting screenshots of it in the bingo parlor of our Discord. Right. And so, like, a square would say, a square would say, chemtrails uh, or chemtrails, a square would say, you know, alien alien abduction a square would say something like that and so so of course it it makes a, a bingo card and 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 we get a get a good kick out of that but yeah that's that's a good time and people just log on you get yourself a bingo card you got your own individual card by just pressing a, a going to a website and then you can you can play along um I guess the, the, the best part, though, is at the end of the night, the, like uh, you know, as, as we start winding down, everybody's like, shit, I, f- I forgot to play bingo all night. I have this tab open and I didn't even play bingo. Right. And I think that's I wish they would, you know, filled out their bingo card and won. But that's telling me that, like, they came here intending to play bingo and they forgot about the bingo card because they were having so much fun or, you know, just interested in the content. Right. And and so one of the things, I mean, obviously one of the reasons I wanted to have you on is I want to introduce you to some of my friends and the people that listen to the Full Dash Closure audiobook and podcast. I'm proud to say uh, I was accepted as one of the few advertisers uh, on Echoplex Media. And I've I've advertised on a couple of the podcasts. It's been a lot of fun. I'm very proud to do that. And so um I I really am glad to to introduce you. I think most nights uh you're hovering somewhere around 
60 to 70 uh, live viewers at a time. I, I foresee, I see you on the cusp of, of breaking a hundred and hitting the big time. So I'm, we, wanna, we, we cracked a hundred last jump, night. I'm with jumping no, on the train right now. I'm jumping we cracked a hundred last night with no big raids. So there shout out go. to Freems, by the way, who did raid us with 34, 34 viewers, but that was like before it went up and went down and went up and went down. Um, I think it's, you know, it's uh, one of the things that uh, Ashley, the media winch always says is that like, if the growth is slow and steady, that it's real growth and to be suspicious if things seem to jump up too quickly, because right. you know, there, there are ways in which like, if I wanted to, maybe I shouldn't. Yeah. I, I don't mind saying this. If I wanted to really kind of mess with somebody, I'd buy them a bunch of Twitter followers. Right. Because they would right. think that they'd got a, the, for whatever reason that they they had a magical tweet or whatever, but just to like understanding that there might be people out there who might do such a thing. If I got, I got 400 followers today. I'd be like, well, I don't think that was Jeff's show. Something fishy's going on here, right? right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Slow so, and, um, slow, slow and steady. But I do see the growth path, and it's pretty exciting. I'm, I'm excited for you guys. Well, I'm just excited that I've been able to monetize it in the way that I have. And I think one of the things about having the older, like more mature audience is that they're going to be a demographic that has a little, little extra money to spend. And so they're no, going to support. And whether we have money or not, I think there's a spirit of generosity. Um, if I waited until I had money to give it to my friends, I'd never give my friends money. So I just give my friends money and don't worry about it. I know yeah, well, I'm weird. You know, we'll 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 kind of see where it goes. The, you know, the one of the things that I think moving to this space kind of brought us up to a level where people were, even if people liked the content prior, I think the the people also uh, see can see work right. They can see that work was done to put this space together. Cause not only is, you know, there's a backdrop here, there's a backdrop over there, but prior the, the setup was different where there was a desk kind of diagonal from me and the media one should set up like, like a whole like tapestries and sheer curtains and little, little fairy lights and, a, you know, just <laughs> all kinds of stuff back there to make sure that it was like kind of interesting to look at, but also kind of contrasty with my background. And people just kind of see that stuff and they're like more willing to kind of take you seriously. I think when, when they see work, like the next spot, people are going to see the work like this spot. I think they saw, Oh, they got a backdrop. Oh, they, you know, have a bigger space. Oh, they have a place for bands to play. Oh, you know, the, the DJs now in the place where the bands are playing. Oh, they got better cameras. Oh, that kind of stuff. The next, the next space, I think people are going to see if I'm, if, if I'm right, they're going to see the lighting. They're going to see that the lighting is just better. One of the and things I one of the things that is a big problem though is because I'm the producer and the presenter, there's all these screens in front of me, so it's hard to light me unless I'm the lights have to be coming kind of down on me, right? Because there's no way I'm not like where the fuck else is the light going to come? I have a screen right in front of me here. I have a screen, and then there's screens up on shelves on this desk, and then there's there's nowhere to like if I just stick a ring light right here, it's just going to bl like blow out my face with the ring light and gonna annoy me and i'm just gonna throw it right i'll drink like five cocktails and just eat the ring light on stream or something like right that. but i think the next spot because the walls are gonna be white instead of this kind of wooden stuff the the, ref the light's gonna reflect and diffuse better and i think it's just gonna look better and i think that like i think one of the things that that people appreciate is that when you've done work and it's not you know um i'm trying to remember who was it that came on they were like, oh, yeah, I want to kind of come on your show one night. And then after the show, they were like, I've never been on a show with someone prepared like that before. They're right. like, w you, you had a five-page Google document with stuff about cults that you just pulled from? I'm like, yeah, oh, it was Faraday. Faraday Speaks, Caleb Kane, the guy who was, um, he was in that uh, article about the, you, the New York Times article about the YouTube rabbit hole. That was who came on. And he was like, I mm. he's, he was like, I just, he's like, no, I've never, why? He's like, you were the most prepared person I've ever been on. Right. And the people that just watch, they don't know. Hildebeest knows. Hildebeest is up in the chat. You know, too, when you get on, you're like, oh, there's a, there's a giant, there's a, you know, even for conspiracy bingo, that's like kind of the, the, the kind of goofy off the wall show. There's just this giant Google document with yeah. just stuff that is being collected. And, and, you know, the, the, the show on Sunday, I mean, I spend, all week putting that together a shout out to jeff uh and especially to ali drew uh in the discord who puts puts a bunch of articles in the the the, the chat there for that 
That's like, right. So, so I want to plug that audience participation element. As you learn uh, about Dave's show and you jump on the Discord, you can actually submit stories for the different shows during the week. Um, there, there are different Discords for that. There's also kind of the, I don't want to call it the inside, we'll call it the old timers Discord. There's the old timers Discord where we yak at each other with, with uh, stuff. Um, there's, it's just kind of a, it's just kind of a small community, but you can absolutely contribute to the stories and, and Dave, unlike the old days when he had co-broadcasters, uh, let's see, he has, he has the councilman and then he has HK, but all the other shows, uh, he's the solo host and he is um, the producer well, and host all week. Uh, you're going to be, uh, you came back at a weird time. The, the media wench was in the process of buying a home. So she was busy, but she, she'll be back. She'll be back. And when, also, when he says they came back, I was not on the internet much during the pandemic. I wasn't into it. So I did disappear. I wasn't really gone. It was but just, yeah, yeah. But when yeah. you showed back up for I showed for, back up on Dave's radar. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, she was in the pro congratulations to her, by the way, on buying a house, even though she had to leave the Bay Area proper to do it. Congratulations to her. We love also, we love Media Winch. Thank you, Ashley. Also, uh, for local love, uh Chip Deville was the uh co host or the host of that for a while. But like right. I said, I think we're that one's changing in such a dramatic way and going to no longer just be the, it's no longer going to be the show it was. And it's probably going to maybe be put out quarterly if that. And so it's probably going to be me doing the hosting because the, the, the subject matter is going to change. And um, yeah, I mean, I it's pretty much, you know, the the work part is all me. Um, the, and you're, the on, part, you're on the, all podcatchers, basically the intellectual Dollar Tree, also known as IDT. That's that's heavily distributed. People can catch huge. that almost anywhere. That po well, and, and it's 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 huge. It charts. Tell, tell, tell us about that. Plug it since it's a, it's the big. Program. Oh, yeah. Just real quick. It's it, the funny the way that, that it came about. Right. Because when we had the big panel, uh, there'd be um, the the good wife and the media wench just fired every one of those motherfuckers sam harris jordan peterson michael Shermer, uh, stefan molyneux at the time was kind of big they just kept firing all those people they're like we're not going to cover them on, on, on sunday anymore so we spun off a show about that because uh at the time uh <clears throat> the breadboard baker r.i.p joe was uh interested in that as well and and so was i and then hk found out what we were doing he's like oh i gotta jump on this too and so it got spun off because people uh, the the rest of the, the women basically on the panel for whatever reason hated those motherfuckers and didn't want to hear their fucking voices and that's uh, you know it's fine it's um reasonable and so now it's like i mean by just by a, a a long by a wide margin as far as the podcasts go it is the most popular one we do just by a wide margin it's great, but I think if they hit, uh, if you go to Echoplex Media on any podcatcher, you're going to see the variety of podcasts, right? Yeah, you'll see, uh, you'll see any of the ones that are currently active, and that means sometimes you'll have to look for local love specifically, depending on the podcatcher, because a lot of times if some something hasn't released in about a month, it'll just fall off when you search for the like the production company name or whatever it is. Um, but if you but you'll always, you know, you'll, you'll find, um, for sure, you'll find the intellectual dollar tree, the Plex, uh, down ballot and our tech show that we don't do live that I actually recorded before, uh, my appearance here with you. That's called how the tech are you? You'll that's right. you, that's you, right. you find all of those. Matt. Historian yeah, Matt's histor a cool guy. Yeah. Historian Matt and historian Matt used to co-host the Sunday show with me, uh, more often, but just got other things going on. He's working on his second graphic novel and he uh, moved to Florida to be closer to his parents who were retired and he spent more time with them. So that's, that's fine. Plus like that, the Plex, the, 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 it's basically just a cyclonic panic attack of news clips. It's probably better that I do that by myself anyway. <laughs> that's right. That's our weekly show. So, um, I, with the full dash closure audiobook and podcast, we'll be recording episode 17, which comes after this one, 16 tomorrow morning. Uh, what time will I be doing that? I will be doing that. Um, I had not planned on doing it live, but I might. Uh, I will be doing that at what time? At uh, seven thirty p seven thirty p.m. Pacific tomorrow night. I said the morning because the person I will be speaking to is a internationally known reporter. 
uh, whose name is Varsha Bonsal. And Varsha is in India and has covered caste discrimination, attacks, and murders uh, on people in the gig economy in India. And so it's certainly my theory that that caste-based system and discrimination is is spreading to the rest of the world through this, through these gig apps and through this computer ad control. So I'm really excited to talk to Varsha Bonsal tomorrow. She wrote a very important article that you can find on my Twitter about those attacks in India. And I think that is a harbinger for the societal disruption that we're seeing. And we see plenty of violence in uh, the United States. So that's gonna be, I got it confused because India is on the other side of the world. That's tomorrow morning, her time, but I will be at nighttime tomorrow when I do this. So I'll be at 7.30 to 9. Um, I'll probably do live with Farsha Bonsal. Very excited about that. Dave, what do you have coming up this week? Um, Nothing tonight. Uh, tomorrow, post-production. <laughs> of course, post-production. Tomorrow, the Plex goes out on all the podcatchers and uh, YouTube. Then Wednesday, <laughs> I have the Intellectual Dollar Tree. I haven't even thought about what I'm going to do for that. It's probably going to be something infuriating by some fucking. But that that records live, and people can join you for the live broadcast. What time on Wednesday for the Intellectual Dollar Tree? Uh, Wednesday, uh, seven p.m. Uh, Pacific, and it's going to be it's going to be a hot one here on Wednesday. So, uh, <laughs> so I'm going to put that up in the chat. We'll just, we just we won't cover like the whole week because you know the plaque is on Sundays. But I'm going to put up uh, IDT tomorrow at seven p.m. Be no, there. it's uh, Wednesday, not tomorrow. Sorry, Wednesday, Wednesday. Oh, Jesus. Okay, so let's see. I'm not that bright. Can I? Oh, I, it won't go up on the screen unless it's tell IDT Wednesday at 7 p.m. EDT. So check that one out. That's a premiere broadcast. Tomorrow, Dave said, the Plex, which is the Sunday show, last Sunday show, will be hitting YouTube. Uh, we'll be hitting uh, the podcasters. Dave's got uh, generally like a, a fourth wall sponsorship program where you can get some extra content. That's pretty cool. Yep. So, Dave, um, I'll let you have the last word and say goodnight to everybody. I'm tired. It's been a lot of fun, guys. Thank you. Thank you to Will for being on. I'm excited about being the uh, editor in chief of such a fine publication with such a fine group of people. Thank you. Dave, for being on from Echoplex Media. I hope you enjoy the rest of your night off, and I'm sorry for taking you away from your day off. Oh, no, no worries. This was, this was pretty chill. Yeah, just, and <clears throat> for the show schedule, it, it always, it, it changes, especially as the summer months go on. So best place to go is just go uh, echoplexmedia.com slash calendar, and you'll see what's coming up. Or the general schedule is just at echoplexmedia.com at the top of the, let me make sure here. I think it's, Oh no, there's a there's a thing begging for money at the top. The schedule is under the embedded Twitch player on uh on the, the homepage of our website. Oh yeah, and, and our dear Hildebeast reminds us that you could also follow Dave on Twitter, you could follow me on Twitter, you could even follow Hildebeast on Twitter. And all of those things would be really nice. Hildebeast can be found at H I L D E underscore Beast. Uh, she is one of my absolutely favorite people. And uh, Dave can be found at Mista Buhau, M I S T A H B U H A U. Did I get that right, Dave? I think so. Yeah. R I P. Or is it Mr. I don't know. I don't even know my own Twitter. R I P to Plex underscore Dave. I got kicked off of Twitter for calling uh, Jacob Wool a stupid twink. Yeah. Um, you can't call racist. <laughs> you can't call racist racist. It's unfortunate. Um, um, I'm so, also on yeah. Blue Sky. I'm also on Blue Sky at Plex Dave. And then. Uh, just and if you're a Mastodon user, that's uh, Dave at port eighty seven dot social. That's right, and I'm at LRB. It is not on Twitter. Um, you can also just find me if by just putting Jeff Thomas Black in Google, and you'll see which crimes I've committed and which ones I'm innocent of. So, um, it's been great, Dave. Thank you so much. Cool. It's like uh, this is the first I've been on your show many times. This is the first time to have you on my show. So I kind of feel I kind of feel like the baby leaving the nest. Like I, Hildebeast talks about that too. Like she's launched she's launched little podcasters, and so I kind of feel like maybe I've launched a little podcaster, or I've been launched as a little podcaster. Thank you, Dave. <laughs>